When I think of the upper class, I think of fancy golf courses, super yachts, sprawling mansions, and private jets. But if you want to get technical and go off the paper net worth, it doesn't actually take as much money as you'd think to be considered upper class. Today we're going to break down what net worth it takes to reach each social class based on the latest U.S. Census data. Alright, so the U.S. Census data breaks down the data into quintiles, which are 20% intervals of the population. So based on this data, we have the breakdown for the bottom 20th, the 20th to 40th percentile, 40th to 60th percentile, so on and so forth. So if we start with the bottom 20th percentile, based on the latest census data, the median net worth is $6,030. Now it's important to understand how we actually calculate net worth. It's not about how much money you make or how much cash you have in your bank account, but it's about how much money you're actually able to save or invest after expenses. So there are many people who make five dollars or $600,000 who have very little to show for it. While there are also ordinary people making 50 or 60K who have a million dollars saved and invested. To calculate your net worth, you simply need to subtract your liabilities from your assets. Or in simpler terms, what you need to do is you need to subtract the amount of money you owe from the value of everything that you own. The remainder is your net worth. As an example, let's say you have a $300,000 house, a $25,000 car, $15,000 in a retirement account, and $10,000 cash, taking your total assets to $350,000. Now, maybe you still owe $10,000 on the car, have $200,000 left on your mortgage, and have $5,000 on credit cards. This means you have $215,000 in liabilities. To calculate your net worth, we'd simply subtract your $350,000 in assets from your $215,000 in liabilities, and you're left with $135,000 net worth. All right, now back to the bottom 20th percentile. The median income for this group is about $27,000. The US Department of Health and Human Services lists the poverty line at $15,060 for one person, $20,440 for two people, $25,820 for three people, and $30,000 or less for a family of four. So this means the bottom 20th percentile is unfortunately below the poverty line. Now 25% of the world lives on $3.65 a day. So by global and especially historical standards, these people are still doing okay for themselves. If you make more than $50 a day, you're in the top 20% of the world. And this group is made up of very entry-level minimum wage jobs like fast food workers as well as recent high school graduates or even college students who are still in school. Considering the recent spikes in the cost of living, this group is most likely going to be living paycheck to paycheck and kind of struggling to make ends meet. If you find yourself in this group, there's nothing to be ashamed of and you're more than capable of breaking through the glass ceiling if you put your mind to it. By working your way up in your current job or maybe learning a trade or skill, or even going back to school and getting a degree, you can pivot into the professional world. Working our way to the next quintile, the 20th to 40th percentile, or otherwise known as the lower middle class, we'll see a median net worth of $43,760. The median income for this group is $48,500 per year. And this is made up of recent college graduates who just entered the workforce, newer immigrants, Retail and blue collar workers like farmers, factory workers, or entry level tradesmen like plumbers or electricians. Investopedia defines the middle class as families who own their own homes, although maybe with a mortgage, own a car with a loan or lease, send their kids to college, although with student loans or scholarships, they're saving to retire, and they have enough disposable income to enjoy some luxuries like dining out or even going on vacations. The term middle class itself has shifted meaning over time. It once referred to people with the means to rival nobles in their living standards. The contemporary meaning is more akin to the upper end of the working class. Karl Marx referred to the middle class as part of the bourgeoisie, i.e. the petite bourgeoisie or the small business owners, when he described how capitalism operates in opposition to the working class, which he termed the proletariat. Now going back to Investopedia's definition for a minute, Something that really stands out is the fact that this cohort is taking vacations. Now, this is certainly a huge differentiator, as it means this group is able to make enough extra money to spend a large sum on something that is a want or a desire, instead of simply only covering the basic necessities. With the lowest percentile, struggling to put food on the table, they're not able to take vacations. Now don't get me wrong, the 20th to 40th percentile is just breaking into the middle class. Which, if you've seen one of my recent videos, is a shrinking group of people. 
So they may still be characterized as spending beyond their means on wants and desires and not really saving and investing a lot of their extra income. Now, to break out of this group, it's very important that you have the right mindset and that you really focus on building and sticking to a budget. You know, if you're still spending beyond your means, it doesn't matter how much money you make. And invest what you can and hone in your skills so you can keep making more money. Breaking it down to the absolute basics, you simply need to spend less money than you make. It's an extremely simple concept, but it's also really easy to spend more money on stupid things that you need, like limited edition Stanley Cups or whatever the kids are into these days, especially in the age of one-click online shopping purchases with same-day delivery on Amazon. The next quintile of 40 to 60% is just simply the, the middle class. The median net worth of this group is $104,700, and the median income is $71,000, which is right around the overall U.S. median household income, which is about $80,000 per year. This cohort is going to be made up of managers in the service and hospitality industry, skilled tradesmen, or blue-collar workers like truck drivers, carpenters, electricians, or even early to middle career white-collar workers like nurses, office managers, accountants, business analysts, you know, things like that. One of the main reasons that this group was able to get above a $100,000 net worth is because they're likely a homeowner, which is the number one creator of net worth in the United States. Another reason is if you saw one of my recent videos on net worth by age, you would know that statistically this group is likely in their mid to late 30s or even early 40s. So they've had quite some time to save and invest. Time is definitely your friend here with compound interest on investments. It's not always about how much you're able to make, but about how much you're able to invest over time and how long of a time horizon you're able to invest over. I recently read an article about a frugal reporter who made about $40,000 a year with a wife who is a secretary making $35,000 a year. And this is a very modest household income, but they were able to save and invest over a long period of time and they ended up leaving a state worth over $3 million to several charities when they passed. This shows that you don't need to make a large income to become wealthy. For instance, if you started investing $300 a month into the S&P 500 at the age of 20, returning an inflation adjusted 8% per year, your investment will be worth well over a million dollars by the time you turn 60, which will put you well into the upper middle class or the top 60 to 80% of American households, which have a median net worth of $201,800. This group has a median household income of around $125,000. Although, based on the previous example, you definitely don't need to make that much money to accumulate enough wealth to land yourself in this group. The upper middle class is going to be composed of specialized blue collar workers, like some high end tradesmen, including long haul truckers, oil workers, dock workers, or even air traffic control. It also includes white collar workers with advanced or specialized degrees, like doctors, lawyers, psychologists, engineers, software developers, or even mid to late career business professionals. It also includes many entrepreneurs and small business owners. Now there's also gonna be some psychological or cultural differentiators between the lower and the upper middle class. Where the upper middle class is gonna be much more likely to invest in stocks or real estate, they're also gonna have a much higher rate of home ownership. And they might even have international vacations instead of a road trip to Florida or Alabama. Now, just because they have this much income or net worth doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be thriving. There are some major factors to consider here, like location and the cost of living. For example, it would take an income of over $300,000 to have the same lifestyle in Manhattan, New York, New York City, as it would in Kansas City, Missouri. And this goes the other way around as well. A salary of $125,000 in Manhattan is equivalent to $50,000 in Kansas City. So the upper middle class folks in the Midwest are going to feel way more upper middle class than someone in Manhattan who's barely making ends meet. According to Fortune, almost half of those making over $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck, as well as over one third of those making over $200,000 a year, which is actually insane because you have humble millionaires who are making $70,000 a year in lower cost of living areas in the U.S. Sometimes it feels like the big cities in the U.S. are entirely different countries. And knowing how to manage your money and your cost of living are major factors in your net worth. If you're making $200,000 and dressing head to toe in Gucci, living in LA, you might look rich on the outside, but in reality, you might be worth less than an innkeeper like up in Nebraska.
All right, to be in the upper class or the top 80th to 100th percentile, you'll need a median net worth of about $608,900. The median income when this survey was done was $187,700. This was pre-pandemic, so adjusting for inflation, this would be over $230,000 in today's dollars. These individuals are likely in tech or senior finance position like senior management or stockbrokers, investment bankers, or very specialized fields like lawyers, dentists, surgeons, cardiologists, and even psychiatrists. This will also include senior executives, entrepreneurs, and business owners. That being said, this could include a mom and pop investing $300 a month over the long period of time, just like our example from earlier. Or like John and Carol, the frugal reporter and secretary making $75,000 a year, growing a net worth of over $3 million. This group is going to be most likely focused on long-term wealth creation, like investing, especially in their retirement. And they're also going to be focused on making sure that their children get good degrees, especially in something like STEM or law, something that has a high paying job. These individuals are also likely going to have a lot of their equity in their homes. The wealthiest individuals are going to make the majority of their wealth from investments and not outright income. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe, and let me know below. Did you think the upper class had more money than this? I'll see you next time.